This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Monday, March 21st. Is it technically spring? We'll look into that in a moment. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the lead BYU researcher on spring equinoxes and on ESPN NIT broadcast, Jerem Jordan. Well, you know, uh, half-butt internet research uh, reveals that yesterday was the spring equinox at 9.33 a.m. in the northern hemisphere. So it's technically spring now. Uh, But, yeah, let's get rid of daylight savings. Sorry to all the farmers out there. We are uh, farmers.com. Shout out to Utah State. But uh, on Saturday uh, night, Roland Minson got mentioned again by our boy Roxy Bernstein. But I do have an issue with uh, what happened here. Listen to this. Mm. They've won the NIT twice in their history, led by the legendary Roland Minson back in 1951, and then also winning the NIT title in 1966. How do you know all this stuff? I do homework. (laughs) (laughs) Do you? Do you? Roxy, does, we, does homework we gave include you some interviews on BYU Sports Nation? Apparently, no love for your boys. Well, what in the world? Uh, the next challenge for Roxy is he's got to mention Mo, uh, Mel Hutchins. Roland Minson and Mel Hutchins need to be mentioned together. Okay, they they are uh, Mel Hutchins was actually uh, you know an All Star in the NBA and like had a really s- successful career to next level. Was like a top five pick. Like you got to mention Mel now. In Roxy's defense, he did mention Mel Hutchins in the first broadcast. Oh, he did. Oh, yes. okay. So he covered his bases. Right. But now he if he throws in a Dick Namelka, yeah, now he, he's gone next level. Well, he left Mel out on uh, Saturday. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he needs uh, Dick Namelka uh, mentioned as well. So, well, here's so. your Monday show lineup, which may or may not include another plea for Roland Minson and Mel Hutchins' publicity. Uh, they may as well do it, especially if Roxy's calling the game, because BYU is going to host a quarterfinal in the NIT against Washington State. Cougs versus Cougs for a spot in New York City and a trip to Madison Square Garden. Yeah! Wednesday night. Plus, BYU guard Trevin Nell joins us for a quarterfinal preview. And strut up for the Peacocks. Are you all in on St. Peter's in the NCAA tournament? St. Mary's, St. Peter's, St. Joseph's, (laughs) all of them. Let's go. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Men's Hoops advances to the NIT quarterfinals with a 90-71 win over Northern Iowa thanks to a career-high 27 points from Gideon George. Trevinell made five threes as well. He will join us later. Cougars host Washington State Wednesday for a chance to go to MSG in the semifinals. Let's go. Six-seed BYU women's basketball upset by the 11-seed Villanova. Ah! In the first round of the NCAA tournament at the Chrysler Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yep, that pretty much says it all. Paisley Harding, 21 points, four rebounds, three assists. She was awesome once again in her final game as a Cougar. Shaylee Gonzalez, BYU's All-American, just did not have it. 314, eight points. She'll have better games, but, man, tough ending to an incredible season. Really tough ending. We'll break it down. Baseball lost Friday and Saturday to Portland, 11-1 and 3-1 to start conference play one and two. What? What? Yeah, what? What happened? Cougars play at Utah Valley tomorrow. BYU softball did not lose. They sweep two games against Southern Utah over the weekend, both in shutout fashion. 7-0 in game one, 8-0 in game two. BYU hit a total of six home runs over the two-game series. I like that. Chloe Temple's doing her thing from the circle. Six innings, eight strikeouts. Next up for 19-6 BYU. Number 13, Oregon in Provo today. Six Eastern, four Mountain. You can watch that game live on the BYU TV app. Huge resume-building opportunity for BYU softball. It's a quad one home game for softball. Yep. Number 21 gymnastics took fourth out of four in the MRGC championships with a 196, 375 in Boise. That's not a bad score. Uh, fourth out of four, they're all, you know, top 40 teams. Eight, uh, eight Cougars received all conference honors. The top 36 teams will reach the NCAA regionals based on a national qualifying score next Wednesday, March 30th. You always in that. Yes. Now it's can they advance to, you know, the final day of that? Yes. Maybe have a shot. 
BYU was essentially the regular season champions of the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference. So they're going to get conference. an NIT bid automatically if they don't They've get got it. that already. They had the resume to yeah. get into the big show for gymnastics. 21 out of 36. Yeah, wow. It's the 196.375 were like, oh, man. I remember when BYU was pining just to get to 196 flat. Like, yeah. they have gone next level. So yeah. they're in. They wanted to win the ship. Did not. That's yeah. okay. They will go to the NCAA. And they have a balance beam All-American in Elise Rollins. That hasn't happened in a long time. Heck yeah, bro. BYU track and field conclude the outdoor season opener at the Trojan Invitational. Libby Parkinson threw the javelin 50.03 meters. Why am I telling you that number? Because it's number five all time at BYU. Next up, Clyde Littlefield Texas relays in Austin starting Wednesday and the Aztec Invitational on Thursday. Men's tennis beat Portland at home for two Saturday, led by singles number one, Wally Thane. The women's team lost to the nerds of Harvard for two in Orlando. <laughs> also, this just in, uh, Aaron uh, Livingston and Heather Knighting have made the 2022 U.S. Women's Collegiate National Team. All right. They trained uh, and tried out. They made the team, which is super cool. So congratulations to those two. Well done, ladies. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Oi, a catastrophe after all. Boo. I know. Not the phrase that it happened. I know. BYU. The phrase is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> BYU women's basketball, uh, despite Dang being it. in front by 11 in the first quarter of 13 to 2. Great start. Yeah. Just could not hang on, and they lose in their opening round game as the better seed against Villanova. So instead of BYU playing Michigan today in the second round. Yeah, I hate that you're here. I know. Means we're here back in studio. But BYU men's basketball did their part in the NIT. They're one win away from Madison Square Garden and a run to the final four of the NIT. Mm -hmm. Jerem, let's double barrel this question. Did okay. what happened this weekend change the way you look at men's and or women's basketball as far as the season rhetoric goes? The women, yes. Because we needed this team to make the Sweet 16 to say, yep, that's the greatest team in BYU history. We can call it the greatest regular season team in BYU history. Sure. But that's not a conversation you have. You just say season now that it's over, right? So that's a bummer. If I mean, even if they win a game and then lose a close one to three-seed Michigan, maybe we're still saying, you know what, this is the best team BYU's ever had. I think it was the best team BYU ever had, but we can't actually call them that because they didn't make the Sweet 16 like 2002 and 2014. You're defined by how you play in the postseason as well. That has more weight because it matters more. This team was awesome. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to in any way uh, dampen kind of what they did, but it is part of the story, unfortunately, that they lost the last two games. Think about it. They went into two weeks ago with two losses. They just lost two in a row, which is tough in the two biggest games of the season. So that's, that's a bummer. Great team, super enjoyable season. You know, nothing super negative about it other than, Shoot, tough finish. On the men's side, if BYU can go to the Final Four of the NIT, then it's like, okay, that was a nice result, all things considered, with the two injuries to Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward. You would have liked the NCAA tournament. This team was ranked 12th. Obviously, that was an overachievement at the time. But, hey, they did something with the season. So, yeah, I'm not there yet with the men's team. If the men's team wins Wednesday and goes to New York, you go, hey, it, it became a memorable season. Because if you don't make the NCAA tournament, and you go to the NIT, you have to go to New York to even be remembered as, hey, that was a, that was a notable season. There are also other notable seasons. Like when BYU's gone NIT one and done, you go, hey, wait a minute. Texas or, Arlington. Or in 2019, you go, wait, didn't make any tournament? <clears throat> Chose not to go to the CBI or whatever, CIT. I think one of those BYU can't even go to. It's for smaller schools. That, that's notable in a bad way. But uh, this team has a chance with one more win, two made to go. Oh, hey, hey, they did something at the end. That's, that's great. It would have been nice to be in the NCAA tournament, for sure. But they made something out of it. I'll say the same thing about BYU women's basketball that I said about the BYU football season. Compare it to mm -hmm. a super nice restaurant, incredible appetizers. The main course steak dinner was delicious. And dessert just stunk. It was not good. And you're really kind of left with a, quote, unquote, bad taste in your mouth. Because of how yeah. the meal finished. 26 and 4 overall. That's incredible. Amazing. But 
the last two games you lose, like that is really, really tough to digest, especially if you're on another that team, food punt. Right? Let's go. Metaphor. I mean, they won the regular season. They beat Gonzaga twice. They had an incredible resume. Yeah. They just, I mean, even one win in the tournament. I watched Michigan yeah. play after. Michigan's really good. Like, BYU and Michigan would have been a really fun matchup. Had BYU lost it, it's like, well, okay. They won a game. They didn't get the Sweet 16. Still a great season. We, f- we feel a lot better about at least one win. But the fact that they didn't even advance to the second round, yes, that's just such a sour, sour feeling. Right? Yes, it's very sour because this was a great team. Like, senior heavy, all the parts, played great defense, one of the best offenses in the country, top five. And they were blowing people out throughout the year. It was awesome. Um, and and it, the argument against this team was, well, who have they played? Like, from I, I got that sense at least, right? We got that sense. So now that BYU plays Gonzaga and Villanova, like two of the top four toughest games of the year, they lost. So that that's a tough pill to swallow. What stinks is Gonzaga advanced. They won their first yes, game. Yes, and Utah, did. another team that BYU beat Don't, in no. Salt Lake City. Don't also do advanced. Don't do it. They, they both they, lost yesterday. They may but, have won, but did they advance? Okay. So, yeah, great meal, just a crappy dessert. Yes. That's how it feels. And then as far as men's basketball goes, if they get to the NIT in the Final Four in Madison Square Garden, then we naturally will feel a little bit better about this. You cross this threshold where it's like, oh, okay. okay, because we, we think about 13 and 16 a little bit. You know what I mean? It, and And you end on – a couple of wins. It's been, honestly, it's been nice to host. You know what I mean? Like, I'd like to think that if BYU went on the road, they'd do this. But the fact that BYU's hosted and, uh, you know, we had 5,000. I called you guys out. I said that wasn't good enough. Got 7,000. That's better. I think we need like 10K plus on Wednesday. This is the last game for Alex Barcelo and Tijon Lucas in the Marriott Center. Has BYU been to the NIT championship in either of the recent two NIT trips to Madison Square Garden? No. What, yeah, one of them they played. Didn't they play for the ship in one of them? Was it the ship thought, or was it the final did. four? Or was it the semis? He, and here's where the NIT comes in, where we go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I thought I thought when BYU played the, Valpo it was for the Valpo, ship. Was that a semi? Valpo beat St. Bonaventure in the championship. So. And then Baylor, was that the semis as well? <laughs> or was that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was the final four. Okay. Crack research team on that. But if BYU can get what to the research team, when we're your, in the Big Twelve, we'll have, tw- we'll have a twenty-person. Hopefully, all the budgets just skyrocket. Here's what I do like about the NIT: <laughs> all of the teams still remaining, the majority of them anyway, yeah. feel like they belonged in the NCAA tournament, which tells me they're all kind of edgy, like ugh. including BYU. Texas A&M feels like they had a resume that should have been in. Well, at this at this time, we'd like to read all the numbers. Wake Forest and Xavier, please no, Buzz. <laughs> don't do that. Wake Forest Buzz Williams and Xavier. At a press conference, lay, he like goes off for like five minutes of reading why they should be in the tournament. Okay. That's fantastic. These are, uh, for the majority speaking, teams are like, yeah, we had an NCAA tournament resume. And we wondered how they would play. They all have kind yeah. of showed up, and they're like, yeah, we want to. We want to go and do this. BYU yeah. could match up with Texas A&M or Wake Forest in Madison those, Square Garden. Those, those are, are great matchups. Those are tough games. Yeah. Yes, no, really for sure. Really tough games. Like a compelling game. Yes. That, that's what you want. Like something interesting, right? And we talked about it before BYU started in the NIT. It was like, how motivated will BYU be? Do they want to play in this tournament? And they totally have. And it's been fun because the second half is where BYU's really turned it on. It's yeah. like, all right, now we go. <laughs> first half, like, I'm not a first half share the score with your friends guy. You know what I mean? Like, oh, oh dude, did you see that so and so's down? And Talk just to me with eight minutes left in the game. Ten minutes left, eight minutes in your case. Text me, then I'll, then I'll jump in. I'm not watching TCU Arizona until there's like eight minutes left last yeah. night. Yeah, and then I'm like, Ooh. wait, call a foul on that last Ooh. play. Oh, that was a foul. That was a oh, foul. Goodness, that was a foul. Jeez. You know the men's basketball season. We may as well make the meal comparison there, too, Jerem. Okay. Appetizers, super good, but mm-hmm. the steak was undercooked. Yep. It was not good. It was not, not seasoned properly. Yes, but the dessert is bringing it home, maybe. The, the spumoni was pretty good. I don't even know what spumoni is. Is that the, Italian? What is that? Italian ice cream. Nice. Yeah. Spumoni? The, the spumoni was on point. Yeah. It's not like the best dessert, but it's still a pretty good dessert. Spumoni. Like the, the NIT is not a molded gelato made with layers of different triple flavors. Layered chocolate cake. Yeah. Like delicious. 
The NIT is like Spumoni, okay? Okay. Like it's nice, yeah. but it's not the extravagant dessert. But it's still good. I typically am not buying dessert anyway, so I would take Spumoni. You know what I'm saying? If BYU gets to Madison Square Garden, then maybe they get another side of Spumoni for free because the waiter <laughs> likes you, okay? Well, it's New York City. Now you have different dessert <laughs> options, which is cool. Like, yeah, that's a cool experience that that – is one game away. Yes. Is one game away. It would be super cool. And given the history in 51 and 66 in that same building, I think that's kind of fun. Let's hear from you, BYU Sports Nation. Did what happened this weekend change the way you look at men's and or women's basketball's respective season? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Doug Heath answers on Twitter. It's a sinking feeling for the women. Mm-hmm. They had an incredible year, yep. but it hurts knowing how it ended. I'm really excited for how the men have thrived in the NIT so far. Hashtag BYUSN. Most of life isn't sitting there wishing you had something better. It's dealing with what's in front of you, right? And uh, the BYU men, they knew the week of Santa Clara and Pacific, that cost them the NCAA tournament. But, uh, and they had other opportunities. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But now they're at least making a run. This is, this is fun to continue to watch them. They got a chance in New York City. Let's go. Maybe they'll get some good salsa. I'm like, uh, New York City. <laughs> what was it? Thick and picante, yes. thick and chunky, whatever. I don't know. They'll, yeah. they'll get the real meal <laughs> treatment in New York City New and York a double City. helping of Spumoni. <laughs> I've learned something today. That was great. I didn't think I would. This is awesome. Okay, All coming right. up. We play Caption This with Mark Pope from Saturday Night. He did not look happy going to break. No. That happened. Angry Mark Pope. And sharpshooter Trevin Nell joins us in studio on a Monday. Uh, The rim was infinite for him and a few of his teammates on Saturday. And what's the game plan for Wazoo? This is BYU Sports Nation. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. And now, introducing your Mountain America All-Stars. Out of BYU, Alex, Alex Barcelo and Shaylee Gonzalez. Thanks for the warm welcome. So, is this where we get the BYU card? But of course. It's the only place you can. This is really cool. Yeah, but mine's better. No way. Get your BYU <laughs> card from Mountain America today. It's perfect for students, alumni, and super fans. Andy is new this season. Yeah, she's awesome. Very capable and very big-hearted. It's so amazing to be a part of this. I mean, to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways. Yeah, we like to tease her. You know, it's natural, though, being the new girl and all. Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, that's for sure. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU's record versus the Pac-12 this year will be challenged today. BYU taking on 13th-ranked Oregon in softball, 6 Eastern time on the BYU TV app. Now, it's gone really stinking well, Spence. What? What is it? 19-4-1 or something? Something like that, BYU right? softball? No. Or just the Pac-12? BYU versus the Pac-12 since August, head-to-head. Oh, yeah. Head. yeah, 19-4-1. Okay. <laughs> 24 and 1. Okay. There was another victory there was another the there was another win. So that this is a big one for that. Wow. It's gone really well for Oh, maybe Brigham. it was baseball against Utah to make it 24 yes. and 1. There we go. Yes. Let's go. Take on the Pac-12. Well, it's going well for softball, too. They're 19 and 6. Fantastic. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Oh, As we just promised, made another three. 
<laughs> Trevin Nell. Guys can He's shoot. Making, getting buckets. He's here with us in Studio B. What's up, Trevor? Uh, what a fun game on Saturday night to get to the quarterfinals. Congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. It's super exciting. Did you ever go by Trey as a kid? Because you have TRE in there, <laughs> three pointers. I did not, but some people try to call me it. Try, meaning you don't like it? I mean, Trayvin, Trayvin, Trey. Okay. Um, Trey, Trayvin. Trayvin. Yeah. Trayvin doesn't, it doesn't really work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't okay. work. Okay. It was worth a shot. Trayvin is Trey BN. We're going to put an artificial accent on the E now. Whether you like it or not, Trey. Capitalize the V. Yes. A little accent over yes, the E. Exactly. Let's do it. What has the postseason mentality overall been for this team? Because from an outsider's perspective, a fan typically will say, well, they looked a little disengaged in the first half of the first game, but then like something changed at halftime. And from that point, you've been a different team. Is it as simple as that? Um, I think so. You know, that first half against Long Beach State, we were, I felt everybody was a little disappointed. You know, like we all wanted to be in the SAT tournament. We felt like we had the resume for it. And then that first half was just kind of like, okay, we got to get through this part. And the second half happened, Coach Pope came and talked to us, and, you know, we started being more engaged. We started trying to pass the ball a little bit more, and that whole dynamic changed. And then we played University of Northern Iowa, and we were excited. Like, from the get-go, we were excited. And I only got 40 minutes till New York, so we're excited. That's pretty exciting. Um, it really is because there's some history there, as we were talking about in the opening segment and whatnot. But um, th this was – we'll talk about your game in a second, but Gideon George, just – 27 points, starts going off. Is there a point where you're like, dude, you're on fire, keep shooting? Like, what's the conversation like when that happens? I mean, he wasn't even talking. He was going like this with his hand. Like, he's like, <laughs> I was like, all right, G, calm down. We got this, kid. We got to go back and play defense. How many shots did it take for him to do that? I don't know. He had four wide open threes, and then yeah. all of a sudden it was just like, he made the first one, made a couple of next ones, and then he was like, okay, every single time I touch the ball, I'm shooting it. <laughs> and we were all awesome. excited for him. So it was great. He was so good in that. And I was talking last week, I said, okay, Gideon, Trevin, Spencer. I want one of the three of you guys to emerge, right, and be the guy going into next year. Well, multiple of you are doing your thing, right, which is, which is exciting too because you want depth and you want to figure that out. But uh, Gideon has such a good game. And then, of course, you bang in a, a tie career high five threes as well. You were feeling it. I was feeling great. You know, uh, me and Santi, Brian Santiago, we always go like this to each other. It means the hoop's that big. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, you make your first one, and the first one for me felt pretty deep, and it was just in transition. So yes. when I saw that first one go, I was excited. I was, I mean, there's pictures of me in my face. I was just like super into the game. And then, you know, from there, it was, it was great. And my teammates were finding me and, you know, make plays for each other. What do you think of the uh, graphic headline there? There Trey you go. There it is. <laughs> We're just going to add a yeah. Y. We're just going to add a Y in there that's not actually there. Now, was Brian at the game Saturday night? He was. That means he PJ'd to Madison Square Garden for the uh, Jazz Knicks game, did he not? Yeah. He was courtside with Ryan Smith. Well, when you got a billionaire homie. I texted him last <laughs> night, and I was like, hey, uh, good to see you in MSG. I hope that you were there watching BYU in well about nine days. And he's like, oh, it's a pre-NIT scouting trip. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. He was there Sunday for Jazz Knicks. You got Danny, you got Ryan, you got Brian. Okay, Trey, your name is full of amazing potential puns or play on word situations. Right? <laughs> this is what broadcasters hey. do when the show's not on. We're like, what do we do with the so, names? Trey, Vin, Nell in the coffin. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, and the Utah accent of that? Yes. Nailed it. Nell, Nell in the coffin. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's nailed, but yes. Okay, some, some research. I'm going to bring you on some history here, Trevin. Or Trayvon. In 2013, <laughs> when BYU went to the NIT Final Four, they played Baylor, Pierre Jackson, and lost in the Final Four. Yes. Baylor beat Iowa in the championship. So that was a Final Four loss. Did we go to – we went to Smashing Pumpkins after one of these. Yes. Games. In 2016 – I think it was 2016. It was that it was night. We, like, raced yes. out to go to that. In 2016, BYU went to the NIT Final Four and lost to Valparaiso, who then lost – I said St. Bonaventure. It was George Washington. Oh, I'm so mad at and, you. Okay. By the way, George Washington, the only non-P6 team in the last 10 years to win the NIT. False George Washington's never lost. Read 1776. So, Trevin, you can take this information back to your teammates. BYU has been to the Final Four a couple times in the last decade. They haven't gotten to the championship game. Mm. Okay. Motivation. And Spencer Johnson said, hey, we want to hang a banner, baby. Exactly. That's our goal. You know, we want to make history. You know, T. John said at the beginning of the year, this season is going to be a movie. And you know what? We're living it right now. Listen, the, with, with the closing scene in New York City, serendipitous. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and my, like Mark and Leanne would show you around the town. Like, would, and, and Spencer told us he's already discussed that 
trip as a sort of motivating factor of like, he, hey, let's get there. He has. He said, hey, if we make it there, it's going to be a fun trip. Like, you guys are going to remember New York. And for yeah. me, I've never been in New York. So I'm It'd ex- be awesome. Yeah, I'm super pumped. It's a great so city. Uh, most of you, like, that we're gathering, a lot of you, most of you have not ever been to New York City. Nope. Leanne needs to it's call in her late city. night connections and get you guys into the Jimmy Fallon <laughs> show or something like that. Different right? network, right? but, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> whatever. He was NBC, and then he switched to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The whole, for those who don't know, Leanne Pope, Mark's uh, wife, was David Letterman's executive assistant for a few years. Amazing. Like, go go listen to their Deep Blue podcast. We talked about it. All right. Trevin Nell is with us on BYU Sports Nation, sharpshooter for BYU. The hoop is this big right now. <laughs> what do you know about Washington State? And were you all in on the game yesterday? Like, did you watch Washington State um, – play SMU I did and you know they're they're a really good team and they they took it to SMU to start the first half and they have these two centers well they're 6'11 6'10 that start the game um but then they have these little two guards that they're not super tall but they're super quick and so it kind of for me reminds me a little of a San Francisco yes feel. I was just gonna mm. say that they remind me of the Dons mm. yep and so we're excited because you know we we were unfortunate to beat them in the uh, WCC tournament and this is kind of like a Revenge game, you know. Is Kyle Smith somewhere else, is he, or is he still there at the coach? I'm trying to remember. Wasn't even paying attention to because the he was scenario. in San Francisco. There's a there's a connection. There. Yeah, I wasn't even paying attention yeah. to the situation. I'm, yeah. I'm googling that we'll, right now. We'll break, you ask it, we'll next break question. it down more, but uh, yeah, Michael Flowers has 256 three point attempts this year. Yeah, Tyrell Roberts 225. You have, yeah, it is Kyle Smith. Kyle. So there's your San Francisco connection. former San Francisco. Head he went. There we go. He went to Wazoo. <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah. AB is the only uh, player on the team with more than 130 attempts. I think you should shoot 73s <laughs> in the next couple of games. Tell tell me about the motivation here because, uh, and we talked to Spencer about this. It was interesting. Like, how quickly did you turn the disappointment of not making March Madness to okay, we're here, let's go. And fortunately, you've been able to have now three home games in the tournament. Yeah. How how crazy is the fans though? You know, like we had what 5,000. The other loud, night, loud though, and they were loud. It felt like a full gym, which is super interesting. If you tell me five, I go, "What happened?" That's it. Okay, I don't, we're loud. We, we were, some of the guys are talking about, like, "Man, nobody likes us anymore." <laughs> <laughs> and we get like halfway through the game, and all of a sudden, it's like you can't even hear Coach Pope calling a play call. You can't hear anybody talking on the floor, and so the people that want to oh. be there want to be there, and it's true. loud. True, the faithful showed up, like the the truly loud. And then there were more Saturday, which is great. Yep. I'm calling for hey you right there, you watching, listening. 10K on Wednesday. There Let's were 15,000 the last time BYU had a home quarter final against Creighton to get to Madison Square Garden. I remember that game. That was a huge 15. game. Okay. It was fun. So it was fun. make it happen. Let's double up. There were 7,000 on Saturday. Let's double this. Oh. Up. Let's go crazy. <laughs> Let's go. Get them to Madison Square Garden. Yeah, Seriously. Sure. They want the Spumoni in New York. <laughs> well, and I, I think it's fun too, Trevin, that we know the last home game now for yep. the seniors. Like, exactly. we thought it was the last home game. Now we know. Mm-hmm. There's sort of an emotional element to that that's pretty cool, too. It's super emotional. You know, the game against Long Beach State, we had Gavin Baxter speak to us before the game, and he's like, hey, I would give anything to be out there. And so, like, that that touched us because, you know, he, he was super emotional talking about it. And then the last game, we had Richard Harwood talk. Mm. And he's like, hey, like, you guys got to just take in this moment. You don't ever know when your last game is going to be. And now we know this is our last home game. Like, yeah. everybody knows it. Yeah. And so how cool would it be to fill the gym for, you know, Alex Barcelo and – and T.J. Lucas. Let's go. Let's get him to New York. Let's get him to New York. Let's finish this movie. And, and as a basketball player, like being able to play in the world's most famous arena would be unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right? It's you know it's a little it's a dream for you know growing up and you get to play in a gym like that. And so, I'm not as good of a player as you, obviously. But at one time I had a dream that I scored like 20 in MSG, and it's like my <laughs> favorite dream of all time. You have it written like, down somewhere? Yeah. yeah it's, it's Jimmer in here, lived but. that in the NBA when he went for his career high 24. Yes, as a New York New York uh, kid. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, with the Kings. Trevin Nell is with us on BYU Sports Nation. And, and uh, did he go off as a Nick? He got a 10-day, didn't he, the Knicks from Westchester? Remember, yeah, I can't remember what his He played as a Nick for a yes. couple games. Yeah. Okay, Trevin, what can BYU accomplish this year in order to impact and get things rolling towards next season positively? Like, how do those things tie in and intertwine? I mean, we want to, like, we want to hang a banner, and I feel like that's going to be something remarkable. And to be able to, you know, show something to Mary saying that, hey, that's, that's part of us. That's our legacy right there. And so, you know, you leave your mark on the court. And we're, we're excited for, you know, to finish out the season. We got, you know, three more games. That's what we expect, three sure. more games to go. 
and once that's once that's over, we're jumping right into postseason and or I guess summer workouts, and we're getting ready for the next season. And so it's it's a full year thing for us. How do you avoid thinking about next year too much and just living in the moment here? Because you know we're, we want to go to New York. You know um, we got 40 minutes. That's what Coach Pope even texted us last night, and he said, "Hey, 40 minutes. That's all it is. 40 minutes. We got one more home game. 40 minutes. We go to New York." And so it's just a dream of ours, and you know we feel like we deserve to be there. We deserve we deserve to be in the NCAA tournament, and so we're kind of we got an edge, like everybody says. 40 minutes to New York. 40 minutes Mark to Mark it York. down. Let's go. We have 30 minutes left on the show. <laughs> yeah. It's been a good first 10 minutes with uh, Trevin Nell here. It's been awesome. Okay. We are making sure everybody has signed the flag now yeah. because we have guests back. And have you signed our flag, Trevin? I have. Okay. You have signed the flag. We're right here. Okay. It's in there. <laughs> just right, we're it just over. double checking. We'll get that later. Because for a long time we were over Zoom and it's like, okay, who signed the flag and who hasn't signed the flag? <laughs> Pre-Zoom, post-Zoom. But it's Trevin fun when people are saying, yes, I've done it. We're good. That's good. You do need some karma, though. You do need some karma. Let's keep it rolling, dude. <laughs> Six three-pointers on Wednesday. Let's, Let's go. go, baby. Let's go. I'll just settle for a win, period. <laughs> take, take out the Cougs, man. Take out the Cougs. Okay, good luck Wednesday. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, coming up, J.J. Watt weighs in on Chuckarama. And will the Big 12 help springboard BYU basketball to the Sweet 16? Oh, if four teams in the Sweet 16, mm. this is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Okay, man, you got this. It's not that bad. Okay, it's a little bad. Just do it. Woo! That was unbelievable. Some things seem scarier than they really are, like buying a home. But your loan officer at Intercap Lending will help you get pre-approved and walk you through every step of the process. Intercap Lending, a name you can trust since 1978. I'm okay. I'm okay. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. 40 minutes. BYU has 40 minutes for a chance to go to New York in the semifinals. BYU against Washington State, Battle of Cougs, semifinal berth. New York City in the net. Wednesday night on BYU Radio pregame at 8 Eastern time. New York City? Yeah, it, it, if, if you're 35 plus, you know that reference, <laughs> right? <laughs> Like, if you're under 35, like, okay, okay, uh, our like students what? who run camera here, you have no clue what we're talking about, right? Right? The pace is picante. Yeah, it's, it was a salsa commercial. <laughs> salsa commercial. I believe it if you came know, out you know. in, yeah. like, 1993. Was so, it that long ago? So Holy that, that was 28, 29 years ago. Yeah, yeah so you, you gotta, guys weren't alive. Yeah, you got to be sense. at least 35 to know Yeah, that. you got to be New 35 York plus. City. New York City. <laughs> yeah. So stupid. You, can you imagine the salsa makers in New York City just being ticked? Like, we can't make salsa? Are you serious? We have some of the finest restaurants <laughs> in the entire world. Are you world. freaking serious? Get out of here, Pace Pic Picante. Picante for the <laughs> peasants. Salsa for the peasants. Pace Picante. <laughs> if I want legit salsa, 
I ain't getting that one, I'll no, tell you that. Nope. And they don't have a deal with BYU, so we're good. <laughs> He's Jeremiah Spencer. <laughs> Paces is still a thing, by the way, I think. The NIT presented by Pace Picani. That would be the ultimate flex. <laughs> on Wednesday, <laughs> on Wednesday, Roxy Bernstein's <laughs> like, Roland Minson <laughs> presented by Ace Picani Salsa. Oh, my goodness. Are we back from break? Yeah. To yeah. interact oh. with the show and get content throughout today, you can follow us on the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it! Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Let's celebrate. What was the top moment of the women's basketball season? The utter domination of Gonzaga in the Marriott Center in front of a record crowd to ever see a women's basketball game. 100%. That was amazing. Oh, B-roll. Look at that. Like over 6,000 fans. And it just was a boat race from the beginning. Yes. Amazing, amazing day. The Black Unis look amazing. Great crowd. Great performance. I wish this wasn't the number one. I wish we were talking about that we weren't talking about this. Yeah. Then that the season wasn't over. But uh, yeah, an amazing, amazing group, an amazing coaching staff, an amazing season. I just wanted, see, I just wanted that dessert. It was not good. Yeah. Four What'd of you say? The- Spumoni? Spumoni. 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 New York Italian restaurants are famous for it. Four of the 16 teams left in the NCAA men's basketball tournament will be fellow Big 12 conference members along with BYU in 2023. Mm-hmm. And the new conference is 11 and 3 overall in the tournament. Amazing. So, wow. Jeremy, when will BYU make the Sweet 16 as a Big 12 member? 2034 is my, I don't know. BYU's made it in 81 and 2011, and it took a national player of the year. So when BYU has another national player of the year, then that's the and formula. three years have passed, so 2041. That's the formula. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, hopefully it's sooner than that. The recruiting, the expectations, like all of that shifts when you go Power 6 conference for sure in basketball. So just how... What will the expectation shifts be? Maybe... It'll be makes the tourney. Yeah. Right? G- give them like five to seven years get to the Sweet 16? Ain't nobody, ain't, Cougar Board ain't giving five to seven years. Ain't. I know, they want it in year one, which is not going to happen. <laughs> I wanted it this year. St. Peter's is still alive and advancing to the Sweet 16. Shout out to my three-year-old Tate who has St. Peter's in the championship game. He also had three one seeds going down in the first round. Who's your favorite 15 seed to make the Sweet 16? Uh, it was between, so there have been three, Florida Gulf Coast, Oral Roberts, and now St. Peter's. It was yep. between Florida Gulf Coast because they were the alley-oop team. I mean, they just dunked all Dunk over the City. place. Dunk City, yes. Mm-hmm. But it's St. Peter's. The the story of St. Peter's and Run Baby Run Arena. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> in Jersey. And their point guard, or the point guard for Seton Hall, the last team from Jersey to get to a Sweet 16, is now their head coach. Oh, that's cool. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? It's Florida Gulf Coast for me. The dunks, the threes, it was, they beat Georgetown as well. Like, that was pretty cool. Kentucky. Yeah. This it's it's Florida Gulf Coast. Rough Arena, 24,000. Yeah. This is Run Baby Run Arena, which seats like 400. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We saw angry Mark Pope on Saturday night, Jerem, staring down some officials mm-hmm. going into the locker room at halftime. Yep. So caption this photo from okay. Mark Pope. Spencer, are we doing this interview now or what? Oh, wait. It's not on BYU TV? My caption is, run, baby, run. <laughs> if you're an official. <laughs> to the refs. Get in the Holy locker room cow. there. I, I avoid Mark Pope at all costs right there. <laughs> Sheesh. Hey, Todd Golden leaves San Francisco to take that job at Florida. We called this last week. Not Florida, but that he would bounce soon. Will his loss at San Francisco be felt next year in BYU's final year in the league? Absolutely. You know, as much as people, BYU fans specifically, didn't like Todd Golden and Jamari Bouye's remarks and the dunk at the end of the game, whatever. Win the game. He's a good basketball coach. And I like him a lot. You, you yeah. cannot just replace him. What, what Florida. He's at Florida now, which has a very rich history in basketball success, including back-to-back national championships a little over a decade ago. He was an assistant for three years at Auburn with Bruce Pearl. He's been in the SEC. Before. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they'll former, feel former it. St. Mary's guard, by the way. Todd Gold. Okay. Yeah. They've already... Found his replacement, which I think is one of his assistants that remains. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Cool. San Francisco uh, men's basketball breaking news here. <laughs> no, no one knew or cared. <laughs> All right, some football, Jaron. Malik Moore yes. responded to this tweet from BYU Baseball with the following. Yeah, this is fun. 
black uniforms get sent out. They're awesome. He says, I challenge the whole team to a home run derby. Uh, what? Malik. Yeah. Did you excel in baseball in high school? I'm assuming he did. Because if he did I it, this is a weird move. I want to see you have a with Cole Gamble. <laughs> Colin Reuter. Whole team. What about this uh, Andrew Pintar? If Jeez. that happened, Jerem, would Malik have more home runs in the Derby or interceptions in the upcoming football season? Interceptions. Unless Malik's a baller and we didn't know it. On the diamond. He had two interceptions last year. Should have had three. Washington State, but he did get a uh, deal with Wingstop out of it. Is he gonna, let's say he has. Did you get a cut of that since you were asking the question? No. Have we talked to Malik about this? Not. I need to work on my I purchased wings off today. Agent. I would like something here if he's, possible. He's not going to hit more than three home runs. Like, as much as I think Malik is a fantastic athlete, like, Malik, you're going to hit. Let's see it. He's going to have three picks, though. Let's I'm going see it. interceptions. JJ Watt uh, tweeted the following over the weekend, which is one of the greatest tweets in the history of Twitter. I grew up on old country buffet, golden crowd, etc., trying to gain weight for sports, but haven't been to a buffet in years. Kalia is from Utah. That's what? and has been raving about chuck ever since I met her. <laughs> Today, I'm reminded of the greatness that is the buffet ri- restaurant. The choice is yours at chuck They have a radio deal, I think, with BYU uh, Sports. Okay, are you as high on chuck as J.J. Watt? It is what it is. Like, yeah, yeah it's okay. I, I'm not, I, I don't, as, as high as him? <laughs> No. He loves it. It's awesome. It's okay. Can I just imagine JJ Watt, like you walk into Chuckarama for lunch and you're like, oh, hey, there's JJ Watt. <laughs> At Chuckarama, dude. Which Chuckarama is what I want to know? Which one? I'm guessing she went to Alta, right? So maybe one near Sandy Salt Lake? or something. Salt Lake. Something Chuckarama? Like yeah. <laughs> I, okay, growing up, I went to Chuckarama all the time. I went to uh, a relative of mine, doesn't enjoy it as much as I did. So I haven't been in a minute. Yeah. But I would welcome a visit to this. In fact, I had a conversation with the said relative that said, "Yes, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind going there. Let's do it." So I'm going to be in one soon. Ooh. Like JJ Watt. Hometown Enjoy. buffet was my jam. Like, well, it was both. One time, my parents went out of town on Thanksgiving. I hung out with my grandparents. We went to Chuckarama or Hometown Buffet for Thanksgiving dinner. That happened. Was it a delicious Thanksgiving dinner? It was memorable. <laughs> Coming up, who gets today's rise and shout up? JJ, let's, let's go to Chuckarama, bro. The choice is your. What are the Cougars' chances of winning it all in the NIT? Ooh. Plus, I got my bracket, dude. Magical New York City ending for that movie that T. John Lucas was talking about. Serendipity. This is BYU Sports Nation. The choice is yours in New York City. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. My name is Sylvester Caldmer III, and I love baseball. I wasn't very good at it. What's the point of playing if I can't help the team win? But then something happened that changed everything. Who are you? Just a friend who's played a little ball. Babe Ruth is coaching me. I know you're a fraud and a cheater. The magic is gone, and I don't have it anymore. I appreciate everything you've done for me, but maybe it'd be better if you undid it. Kid, that was you knocking the ball out of the park. The thing I did was help you to believe in yourself. BYU 
BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball begins a three-game series with Gonzaga Thursday in Miller Park. Watch it at 8 Eastern Thursday night on the BYU TV app. But first, UVU tomorrow. So, important week. BYU and Gonzaga. Got to give them back for uh, hoops. Yes. Season, you know? Welcome back to BYU Sports Station live from Studio B. Just heard from a friend and someone inside the ticket office that tickets are flying nice. right now for the quarterfinal game between BYU and Washington State. Wednesday, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Yes. The game will be live on ESPN2. You can listen to Greg Rebell and Mark Durant on BYU Radio. That's great news. I love it. Tickets are flying. It's got to be 10K+. Plus. Come on. Go. Last Go. game to watch Alex Barcella. Yes, yeah, Lucas, the real go. senior send-off. Get him to yes. New York. AB is one of the greatest guards who've ever played here. Get him to New York. tijon has been an awesome addition to this team this year. Let's go. Jeremy, I just went through the history with uh, Trey Vin Nell mm-hmm. and you on this program about BYU's NIT experience in New York the last two times they've been there in 2013 and 2016. Yep. BYU's gotten to the Final Four. They haven't won a semifinal. Okay, they lost to Baylor. Since 66. They lost to Valpo. Yep. So let's push it forward. What are BYU's chances not just to get back to New York and the Final Four, but to advance in the tournament to a championship game and just maybe win it all? They're pretty good. Let's talk about Washington State for a sec. So this is a team that was net 61, did not win a quad one game all year, had three quad three losses, had one quad four. Okay. Uh, they shoot the three a ton. They, they're pretty big, as Trevin told us. Uh, they have uh, a dude, Michael Flowers. He's one of 19 players in the NCAA who have made 100 threes. AB okay. has not made 100 threes this year, just for context here. Um, 23rd in offensive rebounding. So the comp that Trevin mentioned was San Francisco. Now, that's a, that was a bad matchup for BYU in two of the three, right? So they certainly have to bring it. Lots of size, really athletic guards. Yes. So let's go. Alex Barcelo, Tijon Lucas, really need to bring it right. Caleb Lohner and uh, Foose. Of course, so that's Washington State. I like BYU at home in a close one. And then after that, it's Texas A&M or Wake Forest. Now, these are two teams that probably could have been in the NCAA tournament, right? Uh, Ken Palm, 32 for Wake Forest. Second highest ranked Ken Palm team who didn't make the tourney. Um, And according to Cougar stats, of the eight teams remaining in the NIT, only Wake Forest is ranked higher than BYU in Ken Palm. Okay. So that that could be a tough matchup. Is BYU now 43 or something like that in Ken Palm? I don't know. Texas A&M, uh, 25 wins, net 43, four quad one wins, two quad three losses. So still a talented team. Though That would be a tough game, right? In the A&M's semis. playing the best basketball that they've played all year. They had a crazy run through mm. the SEC tournament. They won some but big But they games. lost, as you mentioned, like eight games in a row. At one, but in the middle of the season, they had just kind of like a lot. They lost nine of ten in the middle of the season. Yeah, like as bad as it was for BYU, BYU lost four in a row. <laughs> you know, Nine of 10. It wasn't that bad. Granted, they're playing in the SEC. BYU's but... 43 in Ken Palm. Okay, so 43. Yeah. BYU 43 in Ken Palm. Yeah. Wake Forest 32. Whoever BYU matches up with in the Final Four, assuming BYU can get past Washington State, is going to be one of the tougher games that they have played all year. Yes, BYU will be a dog in that game, uh, whether it's Texas A&M and Wake Forest, if BYU beats Washington State. Washington State's playing good ball. They just won at SMU. Like, that's a nice win. Well, and A&M's got this huge chip on the shoulder because of their coach Buzz Williams. He went yeah. into a seven-minute rant about yeah. how the tournament selection committee is corrupt and they just don't get it right and it's not. So maybe a is corrupt? Is, like, is just, yeah, you, you, welcome to the welcome you, to... You're in the uh, SEC. We landed on the moon in 1969, Buzz. Come on. You're in the SEC? And it, okay, cool. We, we've got to be careful in two years. If I say something like that, it's like, Big 12 <laughs> wannabe <laughs> says the SEC is what a, right now it's like no one's paying attention, but yeah, we got to be careful. You're chances right. to win the NCAA. I like BYU's chances to get to the final four for sure, especially yeah. the tickets are flying yeah. off at uh, home. Yes. The proverbial shelves of the Marriott Center ticket office. Yes. What is this? I, I would love for them to be physically stacked there, like th- just being. Can you still just, get physical tickets? Yes. At yeah. the Marriott Center? Yeah. Oh. I think so. No? I don't know. Has it gone? Has it in, gone all digital? In a pandemic, maybe not. All right. Good question. I yes. At home, BYU should win this game. And what what did we discuss last week was the number one factor in success in the NIT. Motivation. Do you want to play here? Do you want to win? 
They're all in now. Both teams are. They're all in. Both teams 100% yep. are. Because it'd be super cool to play in Madison Square Garden in any way, shape, or form. Sure. By the way, two years ago, or last year, we talked to Rick Pitino in the practice prior to the season, and he mentioned they were trying to get a game. He coaches at Iona against BYU in MSG. We still have not seen this game. So I'm hoping that BYU plays in MSG regardless soon okay. with the Mark Pope-Rick Pitino connection in Madison Square Garden. It's the world's most famous arena. It'd be super cool for BYU to be able to be there. And we like history here. The 51 and 66 teams that won, it'd just be cool to be in the same gym as the history there. Absolutely. Roland Minson, Mel Hutchins, and Dick DeMelka, like we talked about. So who's going to get to the Final Four besides BYU? Because we're all in on the Cougars. They've already oh, made plans. Yeah. I, so Is it going to be Wake or A&M? I don't know. I have Wake Forest going through. Okay. Now, I did fill out a uh, bracket here, an NIT bracket, okay? Like, I'm the only one in the world. Who else is in your Final Four from the other brackets all on the opposite side? All four of my Final Four is still in. I have okay. Brigham. I have Wake Forest. I had the Bonnies and Virginia in the quarters, by the way, of five and six. Okay. Crazy, right? Okay. I have the Bonnies going through, and I have Xavier. Ooh. Okay. So Xavier doesn't have a head coach either. <laughs> Mild issue, but <laughs> they are making it work right now, right? So does the X get to well, New York City? And did Florida did Florida either at the time? Maybe they did. Man. They do now. Todd Golden. Pay raise. Get to New York City. You like Wake Forest to upset Texas A&M on the road. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Well, I had Wake over Oregon over as my Oregon. Okay. original pick. Okay. Yeah. Well, they got to beat Texas A&M. They got to go through the fighting lists on of the road. Texas A&M. On the road. Coming up, today's Rise and Shout. And I am contractually obligated to promote that we will recap our double down picks next. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have no idea how we did. I have no clue. I didn't look. Well, I'm, ex- don't, I'm, I'm excited. Don't hold your breath. This is oh. BYU Sports Nation. I haven't watching yours all year. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life. When you live at Trio, less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. (laughs) With the free BYU TV app. I like it. Every day, I help an animal walk again. I believe that having special needs animals has brought an extra layer of richness to the fabric of our family. Not many people take in these special needs guys, but in the end, they're the best ones. It's unbelievable. It's like his disability has disappeared. Every step just proves to me that these dogs can get through anything. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast. You can Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, rate, and review. Hey, a lot of excited fans in these pictures. I I like this. This has been fun. 7,000 plus announced last Saturday night. Tickets going quickly. If you would like to watch the last basketball game in the Marriott Center for Alex Barcelo, T. John Lucas, Let's go. You got to get tickets Wednesday night, 9 Eastern, 7 Eastern. Hopefully, Mountain. it's the last NIT home game for a long time. Right? You know what I mean? Make the most of it, but yeah. NCAA tournament. Let's go. 
Let's recap our double down picks for the second round NIT game and BYU women's basketball in their first round NCAA tournament game. Mm-hmm. Number one, Jeremy, I said Maddie Segrist, the nation's second leading scorer yep. for Villanova, will not be the game's leading scorer. And she had 25 points. Well, she was not under her average of 25 9. That's, That's a good, true. She that's was a good, 0.9 uh, under. She had six points at halftime. And I thought BYU was doing a nice job of really containing her. Yeah. She had 25, and they still only beat BYU by four. Like, BYU just needed more from their All American, Shayla Gonzalez. Yes. Number two, Northern Iowa will make eight or fewer three pointers. Uh, they made 11. So, Northern Iowa shot it really well, and BYU still blew them out of the water by 19. Yes. I was over two. Yay! Yay. Okay, I said BYU goes for 71 plus. Nope, it was. Wait, what? Uh, that would be incorrect. Uh, BYU scored 57 <laughs> against Villanova. Yep, okay. there we go. Okay. And Shaley Gonzalez and Alex Barcella will combine for 60 plus parps. Points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. They average 56 and a half. Nope, they combined <laughs> for 50 parps. Shaley needed a, a bigger game there. And Alex has been pretty quiet in this tournament in the uh, NIT in the net here. But all good. Well, you're still the champ. We'll make some more picks for our quarterfinal yeah. game on Wednesday. Yeah. We'll keep going. Plus 20. <laughs> Can I make it 23? <laughs> I haven't been relegated because I got one out of two after the first round NIT game. Yeah. Our you've you've of- done well if the goal was 25. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> our question of the day. Did what happened this weekend change the way you look at men's or women's basketball and their respective seasons? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Cougar Stats on Twitter. No, I'm not tossed to and fro by every wind of individual game <laughs> outcome. Nice reference to the Apostle Paul there. Very nice. Yeah, well, perspective, right? Seeing the big picture. Yeah, sometimes that's fun. But we're always told to live in the moment. So I'm always kind how do you, of like, How do you balance that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, be where you are. Be where your Smell feet are. Smell the roses. Be where your feet are. But have a food storage. So except in sports after a loss. Then then don't be in the moment. Then just, like, take a well, wide-angle lens. Do whatever you <laughs> need to do to deal with it in a positive way. There just you go. Be where you are. Yeah. Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Women's hoops. Uh, what a season. We've talked about it. Uh, 26 and four. Amazing season. Unfortunately, went down to Villanova. Would have loved a little run here in the NCAA tournament, but it didn't stifle the uh, awesome team and personalities and, uh, you know, the Gonzaga game and blowing people out by 30. But this was a really fun year. Well, and let's not forget that this women's basketball team has had multiple NCAA tournament wins over the last five years. They've been the lower seeded team. They've been the villain over that's yeah. upsetting the BYU. Yep. Right? Yep. Ah, great season. Tough finish. Love that team. Our thanks to today's guest, Trevin Nell. Sorry to Dennis. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to Zojan Harry. We'll see you tomorrow for BYU Sports Nation. Go Cougs. <laughs>